If you want news and rumors that appeal, welcome to the dusty wheel. Hey, welcome back to The Dusty Wheel. I'm your host, The Innkeeper, and this is our live call-in talk show all about the Wheel of Time. Now, we're back on a Sunday afternoon doing one of my favorite episodes. It's our variety episode. It's our Wheel of Game Time, right? A little spin here shortly, and we'll start discussing some uh, you know, Wheel of Time topics with our panelists. But first, before we bring them in, I want to remind everybody that this upcoming Watt Wednesday... We're going to have the wonderful folks from the Black Tower podcast with us talking about what else? The Black Tower. That's right. We're going to break down just what Rafe and his team need to do to bring the Black Tower to life in the TV series. Then the following Watt Wednesday, I know a lot of you have expressed excitement about this one. We're going to cover Robert Jordan's notes. Yes, Robert Jordan's notes that he wrote about all the things that were going to happen in the book or he thought might want to happen in the book. And we're going to cover the Dragon Reborn. I think those are quite interesting from what I've read. So I can't wait. The, my special guest that night will be Therese and Linda Taglieri. We're going to break that down for you. I think everyone will enjoy that. Be here live. That's something you're going to want to be here for live because you can call us and ask us questions about those things. So make sure you're there. Now, uh, considering those two episodes are out of our way, let's... Welcome our guests. Without further ado, we have Corey Lansdell, Adam Whitehead, and Rob Christensen. How are you doing, gentlemen? <laughs> lots of shaking of head, little little waves. For those of you that don't know, for those of you that don't know Corey, Corey is an artist on that has posted a lot of Wheel of Time art on Instagram. Go check him out. You can find his link in the description. It's amazing what he's done with some of his caricatures from the actors and put them into the Wheel of Time. Corey, you know I love your work. It's awesome to have you back with us here today. And, and we have Adam Whitehead, Hugo nominee Adam Whitehead, British science fiction fan and blogger. He's also a writer, and he's a blogger for DragonMount.com. Adam, it's so great to have you with us. Thank you for making the time for us. I know, probably no, thanks, uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. And then, last but not least, Rob Christensen, editor of the self-proclaimed Randland's only reliable news source, proudly spoiling the Wheel of Time each Watt Wednesday. Uh, if you have not seen Rob's work in this regard, you must. It's hilarious. His, his, his news is, uh, is, a, is a can't miss kind of weekly thing. So make sure you go follow him on Twitter. He often posts those things to Facebook, but you can find that on Twitter. Rob, it's awesome to have you here. Thanks. Good to so, be here. So before we spin the wheel here, before we jump into some really fun topics that you know some of you out there gave us some suggestions on, a list of topics we hadn't covered before, before we do that, I want to ask you three, is there any news out there about the Wheel of Time recently that you think was kind of interesting or exciting? Like, Corey, I know you brought one up one before the show. Yeah, I, I mean, I was kind of noticing some stuff recently. Uh, one of the things that piqued my interest was just the aspect of some of the other uh, fantasy shows kind of coming back online in terms of filming. And that uh, got me excited about the Wheel of Time and just kind of hopefully that kind of getting back into production so we can get this first season <laughs> soon. <laughs> yeah, so hearing that The Witcher was out. Uh, Adam, did you say uh, Lord of the Rings is also going into production or back in production? Yeah, so that's going to start shooting again in August, um, which um, apparently wasn't affected by the pandemic. They're always going to have this break in filming from March to August. Um, and because New Zealand has pretty much declared itself COVID free, um, they should be able to re restart shooting in, in August um, as they originally planned. So it looks like things are good for 
you know, any show that's filming in New Zealand, like Lord of the Rings. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's exciting to hear. I mean, like you said, they already had a scheduled break, but uh, the fact that they're that they are going back out and shooting in August does give us some hope, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I did see something about. Um, was it Rosamund Pike also said that she was going to be shooting? She didn't say what, but I thought she was going back to shoot in August also. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm misremembering that news, but I thought I saw that. Is well, there anything she, else out there? Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Adam. I think, um, I think Rosamund Pike never actually left. I think she actually spent lockdown in Prague. She never actually oh. came back. Oh, I don't, I don't think I realized that. Okay. Uh, so from my Instagram account, it looks like she just stayed put over there. So I think she's been sort of like, as that, because the Czech Republic's done really well as well, they're coming out, they've come, up, come out of lockdown a few weeks ago. So I think she's actually getting involved in some local projects and things whilst they're waiting for real time to resume. Well, I guess, well, yeah, maybe it's a local, maybe it's a local thing that she's doing, or maybe the cross our fingers, maybe Wheel of Time will spin back up here in August. That'd be awesome to hear. Uh, Rob, has there been any other news out there that you've kind of like globbed onto you think is uh, exciting or kind of compelling out there in the last well, maybe month or so? I thought it was exciting to get, <clears throat> excuse me, even if it's unofficial, the um the casting for uh days conger yeah yeah, yeah you know yeah. and she already made my latest issue so <laughs> that, that was that was breaking news but um yeah that was that was that was cool so yeah the, the uh, work the work the that parts. the work that some of the sites out there some of the fans do geekyary watseries.com you know narg that find kind of these little tidbits out there uh, while it's unofficial it's a lot of fun to know that Rafe didn't drop Days Conquer, right? It's every time, every time we get one of these, I'm like, okay, okay, he, they haven't cut this person. That's great. And that's what's funny about this. They've probably cast so many people <laughs> that we're just unaware of at this point, well, right? They must I want to know who the husband is. I don't know who Wit is going to be played by. Yeah, exactly. Hey. We need Wit. We need Wit. Uh, right, right. Uh, yeah, I think. Sorry, sorry, say that again. There's probably one person out there somewhere who that, that was the hill they're going to die on. It's like I can everything else is fine, but Dose Kong was not in the show. They're just not going to. Yeah. Work. <laughs> okay. Boycott. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's for sure. Like every single one of these castings will lose somebody and gain somebody else. <laughs> right? They're like, this looks amazing, and I hate it. You know, that just mm-hmm. happens to be the way of this. Now, uh, the. I think that basically kind of covers the kind of interesting news that uh, from my standpoint, I did, I did see that good old Barney Harris joined Instagram. So if you're on Instagram, you didn't know this, go follow him. He posted a bunch of pictures of him and the cast members just kind of goofing around. It looks like having fun. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good to see those. Like again, during this pandemic, uh, during this time away, it's been nice that a lot of the cast members have engaged on Instagram and, and you kind of get a feel for, who they are uh, a bit more. And with Barney, it was just nice of him to jump on and, and give us a couple pictures, right? He didn't have to do that. So we really appreciate I, that. I need them to take more and more pictures because I need stuff for photo reference for my drawings. I'm like, oh, <laughs> great. Yeah. If you kind of see the beard and his hair the way it is. I'm like, oh, that's good stuff. It's useful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. We need more of that. Just keep giving us pictures. No, you guys, everyone's been great about that. So I want to see now, more of Barney and Rand on the ATV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I said, right? They're uh, they've just uh, they've just escaped the Trollocs, and they're and they're making their way to White Bridge uh, on, on, the, on that ATV. On the ATV. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the way this works, if you're just joining us, this is the first time you've been with us. We really appreciate it. We really appreciate you here. We do a lot of different variety of episodes. Today is a Wheel of Game Time episode. Basically, as you can see behind these fine. Folks, if you were here at the beginning, we have our wheel. We're going to spin this, and I'm going to bring a topic up. It's sometimes going to be goofy, sometimes very serious, and something in between. And let these gentlemen spin and give me their answers about it. And then sometime a little bit later today, we will open up the call lines. And you can give us what your answers were for the questions we already had, or you know, just share an opinion you have about the Wheel of Time with us. So without further ado, let's jump into our first spin. Here we go, gentlemen. So we got number 20. Nice. So number 20 is worst spinoff, Wheel of Time spinoff ideas. What's your worst Wheel of Time spinoff ideas? And while, while you're thinking about this, I'll ask you, for those of you that are watching in chat here on YouTube with us, or if you're on Twitter or Facebook, you can post it there. We may have to cover it later when we see them later. 
But yeah, I'm kind of curious. What's your worst spinoff idea? Who wants to go first? Corey, do you have something that comes to mind? Well, it's weird. The first thing that popped into my head was when I used to watch Three's Company as a kid. But you have the <laughs> you have the three ladies, and then Rand lives in the underneath them. Kind of, you know, he comes upstairs and knocks on the door, and then there's all these. Weird- <laughs> that's that's I don't know. It just popped into my head. <laughs> Rand, yes, like a, a modern day version, uh, Three's Company. Yeah, <laughs> Rand, Mr. Furley. And... <laughs> I love it. That's a that would be a terrible idea. I agree. Yeah. That is that is one of the worst spinoff ideas I've ever heard. So, uh, I love uh, I love in chat that William Voss just said anything involving Gawain. Ouch, you know that hurts. Uh, what else? Uh, Rob, does something come to mind here? Worst spinoff yeah. idea. But I wouldn't say it would be worse because I think it'd be pretty darn amazing. But I would love to see, I would love to see uh, Pavara and Andrel have like a, a buddy cop show. <laughs> Maybe Law and Order Black Tower. Oh my gosh! Something okay, like you're right. That that is so ridiculous, good. but I love it. That's <laughs> you, you. You broke the rules. That's okay. I get it. I get it. Uh, hey, yeah. Do what I want. For Rafe, if Rafe, if you're watching, you know, try to sell this to, you know, this Law and Order, you know, Wheel yeah. of Time. <laughs> you know, I love it. Uh, Rafe Wolf <laughs> might be interested. We'll make him a Wolf Brother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Yeah, there's. Oh, that'd be great. They're tracking down Wolf Brother. Oh man. Yeah, there's there's a lot you could go with. I, this might need to be a theor- the Looney Theories. You need to carry this through, Rob, <laughs> to Looney's Theories. I love oh, this. I'll make a note of it. Yeah, you need to make those. Adam, does anything come to mind while we've been chatting about these two? What's your worst Wheel of Time spinoff idea? Um, the Great Trollock Bake Off. <laughs> okay, oh, whoa, nice. whoa. You're going to have to explain a couple of things here. <laughs> so, so what exactly <laughs> are they baking? Yeah. Just doing, the, just doing the usual Trolloc thing, you know, you've got sort of like Narg and he comes in and he's like introducing their Trolloc chefs and they're going to be, you know, scored on their on how well they prepared their human heads and that sort of thing um so i think there's a good there's quite a lot of mileage you can get out of that oh my gosh we could just have a a show (laughs) what's your secret yes you have to answer that question what's the first episode let's say narg is the host uh he's hosting the show what would you recommend their secret ingredient be adam for the first episode of this terrible spin-off idea um, I don't know, um, orphans, something like that, yeah, something nice and solid. Oh my gosh, orphans, oh jeez. Okay, for those of you who are watching in chat, I want to know, ah, this is, what's your secret ingredient for this terrible spinoff idea, Adam? That's, that's fantastic. I think this might be the first time I've teared up in, in the show. <laughs> that was good. I, I love rash- uh, Rashers cool. of bacon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Inktar, Inktar. <laughs> By the way, I'm seeing I'm seeing some ideas, uh, other ideas in chat. Tinker oh. self defense <laughs> as a as a spinoff idea. Um, that's really good. Uh, let's see what else have we got here. Uh, Savannah, wise one sitcom. <laughs> that's good. Uh, and an actual show about the Valen Lur- Lu- Lucas Cir- Circus. That's good. Yeah, that oh man. Be, Leafcast, I like this one. Uh, Brother Dan wrote Tinker Hoarders. <laughs> Actually, I think that's brilliant. I How would... many pots do you fit in? I, I, like, I like the idea of a, of a children's show with Tinkers, too. Like, I just oh. feel like that's really appropriate with them, like, sitting around a fire singing songs. and. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Mr. Mr. Tinker's Neighborhood. Yeah. Mr. Tinker's Neighborhood. Jeesh. Yeah, like I said, we could do a whole show on this one question. I like uh, Secret Ingredient, Marisu said, uh, love. <laughs> and Dana threw out Saffron. Oh, gosh. Okay. Wow. Uh, I hope that you uh, – I want to see some of these other ideas. Feel free to continue posting these in the comments. Uh, this is what the show is about. I got, I got uh, the first meal for the, the cook pot show. Okay. It's Monether and meat pies. <laughs> oh, it's, 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 uh, it's throwback to old recipes that they used to use back in Monethrin days. This is so dark. <laughs> this is so good. Yes, terrible spinoff idea. Like remember, <laughs> remember the category is terrible spinoff ideas. That's that's why we're here. Uh, An IEL stand-up comedy special. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Or Cod Swain teaching knitting like Bob Ross is another one from Azure in chat. Uh, oh, gosh. Okay. So we're going to have to move on from this one. Fantastic. Uh, loved all your answers here. That's how this game's played. If you're enjoying this, uh, feel free to like the video. We really appreciate that so the other fans can, can find this and join us here live. And, of course, if you enjoy this kind of content, random kind of episodes every week all about the Wheel of Time in our live Wheel of Time talk show, please subscribe. Give us a subscribe. We really appreciate that. Now, let's spin it. Here we go. We got number three. No, sorry, number five. Let's bring that in. That's uh, New Museum Artifacts of the First Age. So when we get to that aspect of the Wheel of Time TV series, you know, obviously we do see some artifacts that come from the First Age. But I want to know, what would you like? This is our product placement moment. What do you want to see from an artifact from the first age show up in the Wheel of Time TV series in the museum? Let's see. Who has an idea first? Adam, is something, hit, is something coming to mind here? Uh <laughs> um, oh, God. Oh, this is one I hadn't really thought of. Um, so something that they find in, from something the Something from the first age, yeah. And for those of you that are watching... What is the first age artifact you're hoping to see in the Wizard Time TV series? Rob, why don't we jump over to you while Adam thinks about this? What are you pointing at on that newspaper? Uh, I would just love to see. Okay, so you know that scene in um, in the Lord of the Rings where um, you know Gandalf goes back to the library, you know, like and he's studying the he's studying about the ring. And he's right. got like all the the manuscripts and everything all around him, and that's kind of like what I pictured um, uh, Moraine when she goes back to. To study with with uh, Van Dien and Adelius. Anyway, like that that same kind of scene. I would love to see them like rifling through papers and like get. Oh, I see <laughs> one of these in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sarah, I love it. If you're watching, make this happen. Yeah, nice call out Andre to Sarah. Would be there. down with it. Very yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, I, by the way, I'm, I'm seeing some some hilarious things. The, the Pepsi symbol, a dusty wheel cup. Thank you, fidget spinners. Oh. Uh, Stephen King's turtles, <laughs> the uh, a, cool. a toilet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's I'd good. really like to see. Um, oh, I don't know if I'd like to see it physically or just plans for it, like you said, kind of on scrolls or something of like the original NES. Just because. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So th what th what's funny is this could go into that worst spin up idea. Is like what are the worst things that they could bring in from a product placement standpoint <laughs> so yeah like you said like nes it's just sitting yeah. there you know <laughs> and there's, you know, a what if there's a cartridge sticking out of it and the label on it says the dragon reborn like some kind of weird prophecy video <laughs> it only works if you blow on it it's a certain terror yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. oh my gosh <laughs> Toilet paper. I like that from Saw Morning in in chat. That's good. So Adam, uh, has something come to mind? Uh, worst product placement, or not? It doesn't have to be worst. Sorry, it could be best. What do you want to see as an artifact in the museum? I thought something, maybe something like an etch a sketch, something that's kind of like pretty <laughs> primitive by our standards, but they'd think they might have the impression it's like one of the pinnacles of uh, first age technology. Just sort of saying, oh wow, look at this thing. You can create like pictures, really sort of like geometric shapes and you know they were so wise and powerful to be able to do this yeah what i was like it's like it's just like it's like using the one power or something you know it's like you turn these things and then this thing draws up here uh yeah like it would be funny if they called some of these things terangriel and then we'd just laugh at it because yeah. we wouldn't consider <laughs> you, it you know be cool is like when they when you see in the wine spring inn how it talks about how they have like a shelf of more books than other people you know um, yeah, yeah. And just kind of like have one of these stuck in there, you know, unobtrusively. <laughs> that would be kind of cool. The, I I, I want to see that. There's a, some of the like somebody's throwing out like Pet Rock is a great one. Uh, you know, uh, Light Bright. <laughs> Light Bright's a good one too. I like that. Chia Pet. The, <laughs> somebody Chia threw pet out. Awesome. Someone also threw out uh, Shake Weight, <laughs> which made me laugh a lot. Uh, nice job, everyone on on uh, suggestions there they keep on coming dog playing poker machine you know uh missing monopoly pieces <laughs> slinky it, 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 i like it luck puddle it makes, throughout the slinky was, uh, it makes me think that when we when we were kids that felt like magic and like the viewfinder thing with the little turny disc in it where, you oh know, yeah that'd be that'd be a classic it almost might 
that might be too overused, but yes, it would be it would be funny. Yeah, that's a, it's going to be an interesting question for them if we ever get there, you know, because they can have a lot of fun. That's that's a place where they can have fun with pulling in something from our day and age. Uh, well, they so, already yeah. have like Mercedes Benz as a product placement, you know. Right, right. I wonder if that's gonna. Uh, that's gonna be really funny to see if they so actually dollars from them. if they go to a lot of the different car manufacturers and say like pretty much the highest bidder <laughs> gets their emblem in the museum. I, I, yeah. I love that idea. Uh, so yeah, hopefully those of you that are watching, I'm looking forward to see your answers on Twitter and Facebook. I'm loving these that you're throwing in chat here. The Rubik's cube, of course, like William said, but that's yeah. Some of these we've seen before. Uh, Shanksani said. Uh, a magic eight ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All great ideas. Keep on throwing in some ideas here. Uh, love seeing these. And let's move on to our next question. Here we go. We got number 10. Let's bring it in here. Okay, so your favorite off screen event or scene that you three would like to see them include in the show? Oh, I think for me, the, the really obvious one, I think for maybe for a lot of people would be um, Matt versus Kuladin from the Fires of Heaven. So I think yeah. that's something that happens off off camera and that's something I think a lot of people would want to see on on camera, them having that, um, that fight. So what's so interesting about that is I think that is universally something that fans talk about seeing. You know, whenever I've uh, ever brought up this question before, just with you know fellow fans, that is definitely one of the scenes. So Rafe and and the writers team, if you're listening, that is a scene that we are all expecting to see. It, it has to show up. Yeah, everyone's throwing that at Matt and cooling it out in the uh, yeah. in chat too. Yeah, that that's kind of one of those like must see. And I think I, yeah, I, I'll never get tired of hearing that answer and wishing for that moment for sure. Uh, yeah. Corey, what's your, uh, what's your uh, favorite kind of off-screen scene that you, or event that you'd like to see? Yeah, he stole mine. Way to go, Adam. <laughs> he stole yours? I, I'm actually, I'm working on, a, on an illustration right now that takes place. Uh, it's actually featuring Darid uh, during the combat that, they, that Matt and that group of people went through during the Fires of Heaven. And it's, it's a, a, a very challenging piece. But yeah, that, like, there's moments through that whole sequence that I would really love to see. Um, I also really want to see, and it's and it's maybe ruining stuff in a way, but I'd really love to see who. And who, maybe I should before before you before you say that. Oh, let me throw this up. Yeah, I did forget to say this. If you're still watching us, hopefully you've known this to be the case when we're talking about the entire real time. But I did forget to say this out there, so I'll throw this banner up. Of course, this show does contain spoilers. Uh, you know, especially with questions like this, we, I don't think we've hit on anything too significant at this point. But recognize you may have the entire last plot of the book, you know, whatever, or one of the major plots spoiled for you. Something might be said from the final book. So just know that as you're watching from here on out, you know, uh, some of these answers are going to include spoilers. Okay, now that we've told everyone that, Corey, go on. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of I'm torn on it if I want to see it or not, because it's such a mystery to me that kind of gets me wrapped up in the books. But it, who killed him? You're talking about Asmodee? Yeah, you probably know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, who, ki who killed him? And I think that Brenda. has to... That's, that's the terrible answer. Um, so... <laughs> Somebody so, named you. Somebody uh, named you. That's well, awesome. well, what's interesting is that certainly is a huge mystery. And I think it is a cliffhanger that, you know, that viewers that have never seen the books would actually enjoy. Right. It's yeah. I know some have said they just don't think it's really relevant. It's kind of a lame mystery or whatever. Uh, I would I'd actually be in favor of them kind of building that up a little bit more. But I do love this kind of random mystery that showed up in fandom and in the books. And uh, it might have ended with less of a bang than many of us were hoping for. But, yeah, I would I would love to. I think who killed him, that mystery itself, that event, I agree, should definitely be in the in the in the TV series. And Rob, what's your thought here? Uh, favorite off-screen scene or event? What do you think? No, actually, I have two. Um, okay. And yeah, obviously, spoilers, because this is... These, these ones are pretty late in the books, but I would love to see um, what happens to the Empress and Shan Chan when Semarag is involved, right? Because mm. um, we hear about that from her, but I would love to see, like, that just... The, you know, yeah, everything more, yeah, right. Um, and um, I would also love to see um, Egwene and Gowan's wedding because 
Like that totally happens off screen. And I mean, like it was good to get Rand and Tam back together finally, you know, like those two scenes are amazing. Um, yeah. I just always wanted to see like, you know, how the village reacted to her showing up and she's on her own seat and she's getting married. And like, you know, I, I thought it was kind of lame that that didn't take place in the, you know, on screen in the books, you know, but. Yeah, they, they can do a lot of that stuff without having to spend too much time on it. That one's going to yeah. be that one's. This is going to be a difficult question for Rafe and his team, right? And I know a lot of fans are a bit divided on this. It's how much material do we add in that we didn't have? How much new material? Yeah, don't gets get added like in. the Hobbit, you know. Right, and, and but but we these <laughs> scenes we do want to see some of these, and you know, I, do we go to Sean Chan, you know, and, and really see a lot of the what's going on there? Do we get a feel for just the size and scope of that of that nation, yeah. or do we, or, or do they Shara leave it kind of unseen? Too. Yeah, Shar. Yeah, the, right, right. Shar too. I, I'm seeing a, a lot of ideas here in chat. Um, what happened between Gareth Bryn and Morgays? You know, the Forsaken emerging from the seals and the boar. Uh, Inktar going down, swinging like Barmir. Uh, you know, like. Uh, <laughs> The uh, let's see, build up Demondred De- 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 more. Yep, for sure. Yeah, uh, that would be good too. I mean, if they're going to follow his character, his story arc, they have to do that, right? It yeah, can't just happen right. the way that it happens in the books, in my mm-hmm. opinion. That's uh, I saw, uh, I saw a good yeah. one in the chat. Um, so I was thinking they, they could be, yeah, a good, bring like, it in. Yeah, it could be to go to the very last, um, the very last moment of the last episode, and then the show, the entire show is over, and it's like 10 seasons down the line. And then the credits roll, and then it sort of cuts afterwards, and we have a post-credit scene, and it's just the golem falling through the void. <laughs> oh my gosh, that, Still that's, falling. that's so great! Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Seriously? <laughs> seriously? Yeah, you you definitely need to do that. And uh, oh, I said Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Uh, she just showed up in chat. It's good to see you. Uh, yeah, I, I love that idea of the golem uh, falling through the void, but it, it's like a post-credit scene of the entire series. That's fantastic. I noticed uh, too in chat, there's a lot of people mentioning things about Logan, and I actually think we're going to see a lot of stuff about him, which we didn't get to see. Which I'm actually really excited about a lot of seeing a lot of his scenes. Um, yeah, yeah. Know, gentling and him being cat, like all those little pieces that we kind of miss out on in the books. I've said it before. I really think it'd be cool to see. Kind of like almost parallel journeys between him and Rand uh, being depicted on screen. I think that would be an interesting thing to see. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, yeah, I'd also I, like to see more of uh, Pat and Fane also. Yes. You know, especially, you know, what happens to him, you know, and Mordeth together, mm-hmm. you know, because that's kind of, you know, never really explained that much until later on. Yeah. Um, you know, see him so that, that's interesting. I feel like Rod, that's an interesting one for me because I feel like that gets into the territory where we're now we're starting to expand outside of the written, what's written. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that's where the writer, the writing team, really needs to be on top of that and do a really good job because they're bringing in, they're going to be pulling from existing lore to make it work and fit right. But it needs yeah. to. Yeah. Really it's not just going to be choosing what to cut out but you know choosing what to flesh out that might not have been there that much in the books too. Right. oh my gosh by the way there's so many so many fantastic ideas in chat right now i'm just like watching them scroll on as you guys are talking here like tam finding infant rand in the snow um mm. you know uh you know some of these more of uh, swan and moraine's relationship of course you know trying to get it's kind of hard to believe that they wouldn't see more of that for sure like that feels like mm-hmm. that's coming that that feels like it has to be there more about taim and how he, you know, or I, I'm actually okay with leaving him uh, a mystery a bit. I'm just disappointed how that mystery turned out. Uh, but yeah, more potentially about Taim. Yeah, there's there's so much interesting stuff, and that is the difficulty of this question. So that's why I kind of wanted to break it out for everybody here. Seeing all the answers in chat just reminds me that this is a huge. Uh, this is going to be very difficult, right? Like Rafe could read this entire list, and we could probably all generate you know, pages and pages of, of off-screen scenes. And, and Robert Jordan, we got, what, we got 14 books of, like, you know, we have millions and millions of words, and there's still, like, hundreds of scenes that we would have liked to have seen. So, difficult one. Let's, uh, let's spin it again, and let's see where it takes us. Did we already do 21? No, we didn't. Okay, this one's fun. Uh, who do you think would be the winner of a competitive eating contest in the Wheel of Time. 
that is your question, panelists. Who would win a competitive eating contest and why? The question's open to everyone in chat. If, oh, if, we, saw, Matt. if, we, if we saw this happen, <laughs> who's going to be our winner? And who wants to jump first? Rob, did you have an answer there? Yeah, I think Matt, after he gets healed, wins hands down. <laughs> That's yeah, right. yeah, it would have to have been right when after he got healed. Yes, like yeah. that yeah. would. Yeah, I th- I think for sure it would have to be post healing Matt. That's a great answer. Uh, that's 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 hilarious. Uh, Rob, do you got something? Um, do you have an idea here of who would win an eat competitive eating contest? I'm oh, sorry, Rob. Sorry, Corey. Uh, I I really think I'd like to see an eating contest between Narg and Loyal. Uh, that's what I'd like to say. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> Matt! I'm just imagining this table up there, right? I'm, I'm seeing like a small, you know, local fair, and there's a table up there, and you have Narg, Loyal, and Matt. Um, and uh, who else? Can we get the com- can we get the commentary done by um, um, Naram and Lopin? You know, the two man servants. <laughs> <laughs> Those pickled eggs were so hard to find. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see, and let's 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 hear it from you, Adam. Is there one that hasn't been mentioned yet? We have we are on the stage right now. We have Narg, Loyal, and Matt. Who do you think else? Who else belongs on that stage? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's a bit of a cheat, but I think probably the um, the Jamara from River of Souls. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine this huge like Jamara just sitting in it small chair on the stage with us (laughs) the jumara that is i mean that's not cheating you you picked somebody from uh from the books (laughs) that 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 follows the rules i like uh i I like sean said narg smart narg win using superior strategy okay so uh omar said tinkers would out eat anyone if it's a lettuce competition Brigitte would win the drinking co- contest. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, yeah, I think you could put her up there for sure. Yeah. So of everyone we have, okay, so we have the Jumara. Uh, oh, well, now, see, Mahil in chat just threw in Machin Sheen. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, so now the competition's gotten really, you know, it's gotten much stiffer against Matt here post-healing. Um, so, okay, so our, our stage is going to be the Golem. We're going to have Machin Sheen, Jumara, Loyal, and Narg. Of those, I'm kind of curious, among you three, who wins that competition, competitive eating competition, of those? <laughs> I think probably Machin Sheen, because it would just consume everyone else. Yeah, so it, Jumara, it, it, Jumara would eat everyone else after they've been eating their fiddle, and then Machin Sheen would just eat the, the, the Jumara, and then I think that's probably how it wins. Yeah, so, I mean, we have some people in chat pointing this out, but, you know, Machin Shin only eats souls. So if it's a soul competitive eating contest, he wins. But I, they're, they're bringing up a, some, some point of contention here, which I'm okay with. I, I hear that. So who else? Okay, if it's not souls and Machin Shin just doesn't enjoy, you know, <laughs> doesn't enjoy the, 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 the cake or the pie that's there, who wins from the remaining uh, people? It, I feel like you had to go Jamara there. Oh, the- there you go. I think I think the golem. Well, yeah. I mean, wh- why would you say the golem? I just feel like there's a lot of uh, staying power there. <laughs> and, he and has... He's smart. He, he'll just he'll just eat you know the important parts. <laughs> I mean, the golem. He does seem like he yeah, probably has yeah. some. The way that he's been constructed does have some capability of, uh, you know, yeah. morphing his body. So. I'm, you know, I think I would probably support that. You know, I would go, I would go, I would go He's golem. going to make Is seven that... stomachs for himself or something. It's going to be yeah, yeah. Uh, unseen, unseen but effective. This is, a, this is a great, this ties in really well with our spinoff ideas. A, a, <laughs> yeah. a competitive eating contest between the characters of the Wheel of Time. That's one of your worst spinoff ideas. Chef Randland. Although Neckboat is bringing up that maybe the golem doesn't enjoy pie and only blood, um, blood or pie. Uh, <laughs> so, so I mean maybe we're down to Jumara. So uh, yeah, this is like uh, this is a goofy answer. Uh, thanks for those of you that threw out some answers in chat. That's a uh, that's a lot of fun. We had to do some of these, you know, can't be serious. They got got to be fun. So let's uh, let's jump to the next one. Here we go.
So we got number six. Let's bring it on. What do we have? Okay, so I, I like this question a lot. And this is a little bit more serious here. Of all of the cast members that have been officially cast, the ones that have interacted with fans, there, there's, I guess it doesn't have to have been interacted, but basically of all the cast members we know that are going to be in the show, who do you feel is the most either intriguing, entertaining, or surprising cast member? Not who they're playing, just who's been cast. So, and, and, and tell me why. And for those of you that are watching, I'm kind of curious who you think out there from a cast member, most intriguing, entertaining, or surprising. If you want to come up with a fourth category, you can. But basically, most intriguing, entertaining, or surprising. And, and, and why is that cast member that for you? So, Rob, is there one that kind of comes to mind for you? Yeah, I mean, the first thing that I think of is Barney, right? Like, like he, it's like he has the same personality as Matt, you know, like, even off screen too. I mean, you, you remember this, the story that, uh, that Rafe was telling at the, um, at the Jordan con online, you know, of, of them sneaking off together, um, you know, going hunt for treasure, uh, in Shatter Loga, you know, or whatever. Um, you know, just just his, his pranks, and from what we've seen of him on social media, is not very much. But um, but I definitely get the impression, and from his little bit at the table read, you know, just as the way he delivered that line with the fireballs, just I think he's going to be perfect. Yeah, I like. I mean, Barney Harris definitely. There's definitely something really intriguing about him because he hasn't interacted as much as the others. But there is some mischievousness that you almost see in his face. Mm-hmm. Um, that that I hope transcends into the character for sure. Uh, Adam, is there one of the cast members that stands out to you just from their interactions with fandom, just their previous work, whatever it is, that just kind of makes them from a just a person standpoint most intriguing, entertaining, or surprising? Um, I mean, the actor who I'm most excited about seeing, I think, is um, uh, Maria Dor Kennedy because I've been a huge fan of her work ever since she was in um, The Tudors. Um, and she's been great in so many shows, Orphan Black, um, a few others as well. Um, so we think, we're not 100% sure, but we think she's probably playing Elida. Um, and she was always, she was actually my fan cast for Elida for years. Oh, was she? <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, that's always, so that was actually sort of like fantastic when they said she was cast. And it's like, well, she's probably playing someone else. She might be playing Varen. There's a couple of other possibilities, but she's, if she is playing Elida. That's sort of like a perfect piece of casting because she's such a great actress and she's such, got such, great sort of like presence and she brings sort of like you know 110 percent to whatever role she's playing um she didn't have because she, she played Catherine of Aragon in the Tudors which wasn't the biggest role but you know every single scene she sort of like completely stole away from the other actors um and she was like very much like a badass sort of like um you know sort of protector figure in Orphan Black and the main character's adopted mother um so yeah so she's the she's the actor I'm most excited about seeing bringing what she can do to the Wheel of Time Awesome. Yeah, that's a great answer. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not as familiar with her work, but everyone. Always, I mean, they when they talk about her, always speak about her in kind of the terms that you just did, which is that she's amazing. So yeah, I can't wait to see what she does in the in the in the series itself. And Corey, who's uh, who's come to mind for you that either hasn't been chosen here yet? It's a tough one. It's hard for me to narrow it down because all the drawings that I've done, I, I've really thought about that a lot with the characters as I've been trying to depict them. But I. I guess it comes down between two for me, but I'm going to pick um, Johan Myers as oh. Pat and Pink. Oh, that's a great I'm, one. I'm really excited. I, I was kind of, uh, he's not what I, in my head canon at all, what I saw, but when I started to look for photo reference and kind of like looked at some of his footage of his acting and stuff like that, I'm like, oh man, I think he's really going to carry the, I think he's going to carry it very well. And uh, I've always wondered at how someone would sort of depict that sort of breaking of personality as he goes through the the story and he's jumping between accents and motivations almost and stuff really quickly on the fly i'm just really interested to see how he carries those scenes and uh and interacts with the rest of the cast it's going to be really neat and i just love pot on journey right from the peddler to the to where he ends up it's it's a really interesting arc for me so yeah he's a he's a great pick uh mine in this is priyanka bose like there's I don't know what it is. She's just extremely uh, intriguing. Uh, watching or following her on Instagram has just been a, a pleasure. You know, she's always interacting on that uh, mm-hmm. platform. And she's posting really interesting comments and, and quotes and things. One was today about healing 
and scars and such uh, that I that actually like it affected me. Like she's posting things, you know what I mean? It's not just like the interaction. She's posting things that I'm sitting back and thinking about outside of the books just as a person. And mm-hmm. so for me, she's been a lot of, uh, not fun is the wrong word. She's just, it's been really cool to kind of follow her on Instagram. So for those of you that are kind of like, I don't know these actors very well, and this is a difficult decision to make or a question to answer, like, I'm serious, go follow them, like, on Instagram and Twitter and such. And many of them do post a lot, and you can get a feel for them just as, as actors. Also, they've done a lot of work, and you can go follow those. I think I've seen something that uh, Johan Myers did, and mm-hmm. I'm absolutely excited about him, the characters he's playing. But to answer this specific, specific question, definitely a Priyanka Bose. Uh, can't wait to see what she brings to Alana. I never really cared for Alana as a character in the book, but now I'm absolutely invested in that character. <laughs> I want to see what's going to happen. So yeah, that, that one's for me. I'm kind of curious. I've been watching everybody uh, post some of these, you know, obviously every one of the characters is coming up. Uh, I've, I've seen some Marcus, you know, I've seen Alvaro, uh, Morte, you know, and then, and this is like part of it, right? Part of the interest for me is just getting to know some of these people out or, you know, learning about them outside of the show uh beyond because right now right we don't we, we still have time before the show's gonna be there so yeah that, that's exciting for me and it's been a lot of fun this one i'm for those of you that haven't answered yet i'm kind of curious i'll try to go back through chat and and find out but I'm, I'm curious why are these people the most intriguing entertaining for you uh, i'm, I'm kind of surprised that alexander wilhelm didn't come up he's mm. very entertaining on social media like he looks there's just something about him that i absolutely accept as tom you know, mm-hmm. just as a person, like it seems like part of his personality. And uh, so, yeah, I can't wait to see him actually play that role. But yeah, I want to see him like reference the role or something because, you know, he's he, he posts a lot of stuff, but he's very detached. Right. Like yeah. legally, you have to be, you know, because of the NDAs and stuff like that. But I would love to just see him, you know, just kind of give us something. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he's playing a harp. I don't know. Just something. <laughs> yeah. Something. Yeah, absolutely. No, and, and the more and more they do, like like Barney jumping on Instagram, that was just fun. It's it's you get a little insight, just a little bit into their personalities, and it's been a, it's been really enjoyable. So, okay, let's. Uh, Sorry, if I can. If yeah, I can yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Before we spin it, honorable mention. I think I have to give an honorable mention to Daniel Henney, because he's just mm. been really, really good on social media. He's um, if you look on his YouTube channel, he's got some very long videos where he talks about his approach to the acting craft and you know how seriously he takes it and. Um, differences between performing in sort of like American productions and South Korean productions and all over the world. Um, and he seems to be like a very serious guy, but who's also got like a really good sort of goofy side. And he's got these videos of him playing these dogs and that sort of thing. Um, so he seems to be an actor, I think it's really, really interesting and throwing himself into the physicality of the role and making sure he knows like the fighting moves um, and take and reading the books. And the fact he's actually, I think he, his most recent video, he was already on um, A Crown of Swords. So he's like blasting through the books to actually pick out all the bits of information for Lamb's character. So I think that he's uh, that's uh, that's a really good sign for how seriously he's taking the role as well. Yeah, that's a great he's one. Also, he's that's also really, really easy to Photoshop. <laughs> Not that I would ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Daniel Henney, that's he's a great. Got a lot that's... of a lot of images out there. Yeah, he does. Well, he does, and uh, also, like you said, he did recent interviews. I think he did some Instagram live stuff. It was a lot of fun to kind of dig into, and, and he, he went out. I think it's, it's probably a little bit intimidating to go out and start answering questions for the actors that are new to Wheel of Time fandom. Uh, you know, yeah. It's not that I think that fandom is rabid, but we can be a, maybe a little <laughs> bit intimidating with our awareness. Uh, and so, yeah, he's just he's really great. He's really great about interacting and, and, like you said, kind of digging into the role of why. And I love that he's reading the books. I, mm-hmm. I, I love that and, and hope to... Hope it, it'll be really exciting when he gets to the very end. It'll be interesting to see uh, what he thinks about his character's arc at that point. So, okay, there, let's. Uh, in, in chat said that Henny is graceful, which I think is a good word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's fantastic. Okay, here we go. Trying to think if we've ever duplicated a number on one of these. Okay, so before we do this next category. I want to remind everybody that this is a live call-in talk show. So please give us a call. It's 1-313-825-5968 or 1-313-TALK-WATT. 
Give us a call if you want to answer. Give us your answer for any of the questions we've covered up to this point. I'm going to pose a new question now and try to keep it, you know, to the questions we've already addressed at this point when you do call. But yes, feel free to give us a call. Like I said, that's what part of the fun of this is for us hearing your voice live and just kind of enjoying fandom that way. So we look forward to hearing from you. Now, this one was 17. We have Perrin's, the category is Perrin's least favorite chore. <laughs> there we go. So for those of you that are watching, what do you think Perrin's least favorite chore is? Uh, I'm kind of curious what you'll come up with. And to my panelists, uh, when, you, when it comes to thinking about Perrin doing chores, Rob, what's Perrin's least favorite chore? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's coming to mind. You're stuck there. Corey, does anything come to mind for you? Well, I, I have a question about the question. Okay. Uh, are we talking, uh, you know, pre-adventure Perrin? Uh, on the fa- like working at the blacksmiths and on the farm are we talking married a, parent? married yes, parent. That, was, that was my thing because i'm like i don't know if i want to get in between that dynamic <laughs> yes this is this is gonna happen this is uh you know this can include spoilers throughout the entire book this is married parent this is parent as we know him by the end what's parent's least favorite chore at that point what comes to mind and adam do you have anything there as these two think <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I was thinking of pre-married. I remember in, um, I think it's The Dragon Reborn, when he was trying to be treated like an equal by Moraine and then somehow ended up doing all the crappy chores around the uh, around the, around the camp when they were um, travelling along. He didn't quite know how he'd, how that had happened. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, how about explaining himself is his least favourite chore? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like uh, talking to his wife is what they're saying in chat. Yeah. Giving giving like, orders, <laughs> Joel. Yeah, I I kind of was going with like uh like just caring for people, like taking care of everybody. He always like in the book, he's always complaining about like not complaining, but a lot of his thought process is about how he's like interacting with people, how to take care of them, what they need, and he's very like burdened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, his least favorite chore is uh, uh, beating the wolfskin rug. <laughs> his oh, least favorite chore <laughs> is um. Sweeping out after Matt let loose the flower dogs through the <laughs> yes, his least favorite chore is cleaning up after his cleaning friends. After yes, Matt. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a great answer. His least favorite chore is cleaning up after Matram, uh, yep. pumping Picking badgers out of the inn and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, cleaning yep. fish for dinner, pumping the bellows. Yep. <laughs> and when he's uh, when, after he becomes lord of the two rivers and he has to deal with the village council and the uh, and the women's circle, I, I think that's. Uh, that's probably a chore that's that he a probably chore, yeah. quite yeah. happy to get away from in Lord of Chaos when he has to go back totally. on the road. It's it's the lording. He hates the lording. Like he just doesn't like the lording. He'd rather just be doing, you know, being with his wife and doing stuff. But he's got to be a lord and yeah, 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 yeah. You got to pass judgment and stuff. Yeah. I like what Shantani just said uh, in chat. Is uh, guessing what Fayil is thinking, guessing wrong, <laughs> and then acting on that false impression. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this one's uh, this one's just a, a bit goofy, but let's uh, let's bring in some of our callers who have called in here. Um, Andrew, a longtime caller here, let's bring him in. Hey, Andrew, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How you doing? No, this is not Andrew. Oh, this is this is a different Andrew. Okay. <laughs> uh, so who's this? Lancer. What's up? Lancer. Oh, man. Sorry. I had, uh, I had down at Norm. Sorry. I didn't get to like, I didn't get to announce you in any, uh, I had down Andrew. So, so Norm, it's awesome to hear from you. So what is your call about today? Actually, you know what? I, I do have a, a question that I would ask you guys, and, and I don't know if it's on your little spin thing, but <laughs> if, what is a role that the uh, producers absolutely have to nail because if they if they miss it you guys would just rage quit and never watch the show ever again and i'll sit back and listen to you guys so have a hey good man. have a good sunday y'all norm it's awesome lancer awesome to hear from you man talk to you soon so that's a this this kind of question we've done this um we've done this a couple of times a variation so of this so i like that uh, which is who do they have to get right and versus asking the question of why would you stop watching you know if they did something wrong who do they have to get right? Adam, is there somebody in your mind where it just, it has to be, you know, someone else can get, they can whatever, characterize them poorly, but this person just has to come off 
right or quote unquote right i mean I, I really hate to be captain obvious but i think it has to be rand it's kind of like i think the weight of the whole show is based mm. around that character and around that character arc um so you know if you get the character of um you know sort of like wit congo not quite right the show can survive that but if they misunderstand rand's character or they don't quite deliver his the difficulties of his storyline um and then the show has um, has like major problems um so i think that's a very obvious answer but i think it's also probably the truest one if they don't get rand in his character arc quite right then the, sh the whole show as a whole kind of as a non-starter yeah that's an interesting one that, like for example brandon got you know uh people believe brandon got matt wrong if you will in the last couple of books he's talked about having a difficulty in that regard and actually talked about talking to barney harris about that but it's not like none of us read the books and we didn't we keep on watching how you know I guess maybe it's just the degree of how wrong they get him. I guess maybe that's more what I'm thinking. You know, maybe he just comes across, uh, le you know, I don't know, less Rand, but he can still kind of carry it through because the plot stays the same. I don't know. So I often wondered about this. You know, if they get a character wrong, is it going to matter? I think Rand's a good pick in this regard. Rob, is there somebody coming to mind for you where you think, like, this is a must? You have to get this right from a production standpoint. The writers have to get it right, and the actor does too. It do be bail Doman fortune prick me. <laughs> <laughs> they have to get him right. It just ruins it for you. <laughs> they have yeah. to nail him. He's like the best character in the whole series. <laughs> what would, how would they, how would he they not nail that scene. character? That's true. That's true. He does. But how would they not nail that character? He just, uh, I guess it's the, uh, by cutting him out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Out. yeah. They, they better not cut him out. That'd be terrible. Uh, bail Doman. <laughs> I love that. Uh, it's funny, people are throwing out now their uh, goofy answers. Pater and Senbui. Almond <laughs> Bunt. Almond Bunt, yes. Yeah, yes give yeah. him a, a, a peach orchard instead of an apple he orchard. We're cracking skulls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Peaches are poison. <laughs> what are you, Corey? What's coming to mind for you that somebody they have to get right? Oh, man. Is it cheating to say an aspect of Rand? Uh, In, okay, okay. I'll accept that. I really think they need to get. Um, his relationship with Luz Theron, right? Um, yes. So it's, almost, it's almost a Luz Theron piece okay. for me rather than a Rand piece. Um, I really feel like that relationship between those two throughout the books is just so compelling and uh, carries, it just ties into the whole story arc so much that uh, I think it's really important. And it ties into the history of the world and all those pieces. And we kind of get those little bits through his interactions with Luz Theron. I, I feel like that's really important. So I, and I don't know who they're, I don't know how they're going to handle that. If they're going to have someone on screen or they're just going to have a voiceover or what, but I feel like that is going to have to be really well handled. Yeah. I, this one itself, I want to do probably an episode of the show about this relationship. This has to be done right. And I agree. I, I'm now on board with Adam's answer even more so now because of what you just said, the, the relationship of what is and quote unquote who is Luz Theron, mm -hmm. it's it's something that they can easily get wrong and easily guide the viewers into believing something that's incorrect about that relationship because they're attempting to visualize it in a way for the viewers to see. Mm -hmm. So I would agree with that. I mean, I, I don't want to go too far down that hole because I think we could do, like I said, the whole show, but I absolutely oh, yeah. agree. Um, it that would it wouldn't ruin it again. I've read these books for too long to not watch the show. I don't really, I don't really care what they do. I'm going to watch it, but I would be really disappointed if, in the end, um, if in the end we they got that one wrong. So, yeah. let me uh, let me bring in our next caller here. It's been Just waiting quick, a little. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Chat. Malkir talks said uh, that if they get the innkeeper of the dusty wheel wrong, all bets are off. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, there's only one way to get that right. You know yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah. Welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing tonight? Hi, I'm Stubble McShave um, from Sweden, actually. I'm um, also known as Tom on the Fiero Land. Oh, Tom, how are you doing? <laughs> it's awesome to hear yeah. from you. So, uh, so yeah. it's good uh, to hear I, from I, you first. I, so, uh, what's what's going on, and what uh, questions do you have? Um, I, um I, it's going fine here. <laughs> um, my question is, uh, the Forsaken, how early do you think we will see them? And uh, do you see we will see them um, take power and consolidate their power 
uh, during the events of Great Hunt and so on. Uh, how much will we see of them? How early will we see of them? What do you think? Yeah, this is a great this is a great question uh, for the panel too. I'll throw my idea out here, and then we'll ask some of the panel. So I would say, from the Forsaken standpoint, the biggest issue here is I want there to be the thirteen Forsaken, but can we can we afford for them to? Can they afford to have thirteen Forsaken? And if they can't, you know. How would they consolidate that? The other thing that comes to mind is budget for the first season and who they're already paying. You know, do we we don't really need to see too many Forsaken if they don't go too far into the Great Hunt, and do we even see the ones that we see? So I'm kind of curious, Adam, what's your thought about the Forsaken? You know, do you think that they're going to consolidate? Do you think we're going to keep all of them? How do you think it's going to kind of play out here in the first season or two? Um, I mean, I did have one idea, which is that they could always have both Agonor and Balfamul be too disfigured, so that prevents them from having to necessarily cast like really big actors for both of them. Um, but I think I don't see any reason really to cut any of the Forsaken because the Forsaken aren't all equal anyway. So if you look in the books, we get so much more page time for Samael and um, Lanfear and. Um, Demandred compared to, for example, Blau, who kind of like shows up, has like one word and dies instantly. So it's kind of like a, I think <laughs> the Forsaken aren't all equal anyway. Um, like Ravin appears in like four scenes before he's no, in like, like story. So I don't see any reason to necessarily cut the Forsaken. Um, yeah. sorry, um, how early we see them in the story, I think, is a different question i think probably in season because again we don't know how long the show is going to run for we don't know how many how quite what the book to series ratio is going to be so i assume we'll see um Agador and balfour at least in season one and maybe lamphere as well um but how will they go beyond that um i'm not sure yeah that's a it's it's going to be a tough call uh i think uh, across the board and uh, rob um uh, do you have an answer on this one? Uh, is there something that comes to mind of how you think they should handle the Forsaken? I think uh, you could probably do the bulk of the first season without them at all, right? Like, because we really don't see them. Um, and to, and if they change the ending, then we might not even see, you know, Balfamol and and uh, the other dude. <laughs> at the moment, uh, Agonor, yeah, Agonor, yeah. Hmm. Um, I think uh, when we get to the Dark Friend Social, um, you know, it'd be cool if they were kind of like, you know, overseeing that is, you know, more than just Ishamayel, you know, like if, if we see them there, you know, bickering or something, you know, in the shadows, I don't know. But, yeah. And I kind of wonder how much of Ishamayel we will actually get. Uh, that's, that's, you know, I think you can just kind of pepper them in season by season you know, without having to give you all 13 at once. And um, it would still be pretty effective. Yeah, no, that's, uh, I, I agree, I agree. Hey, uh, Tom, uh, what's your hope, before we let you go, What? Uh, first of all, I appreciate you calling in, but what's your hope with the Forsaken in season one? Do you do you hope that we get more than just a Shamael, or are you, are you thinking they're just going to give us a Shamael and then maybe handle it in the se- season two and decide then? Um, I, I think we will. Uh, I, I want all 13 because I think 13 is an imp- important number. Uh, with the, uh, the four, 13 plus 13 to turn people and so on, and 13 in several other ways as well. So I think 13 is an important number. Um, and then I also I want to see a few of them introduced and, and we see how they consolidate power to some extent. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think want it. We, we will need three or four times more POVs from Forsaken than we have in the books. Yeah, the uh, the I think that is um, I think that is possible that they uh, that they do that that they do consolidate a couple things later on. I just in the end I I want to have thirteen. So that's 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 uh, that's the goal. I've always said that. Um, and uh, yeah, for, uh, by the way, Tom, I really appreciate you calling in. It's awesome that you're listening. It's awesome to hear your voice. And hopefully you give us a call back again, okay? Yeah. Have a good one. Have a good, okay. have a good morning, Bye. I should say. Bye-bye. And uh, I know Andrew's been waiting here for just a moment. Let me, uh, let me bring Andrew into the show. Andrew, welcome to the Hello. Dusty Wheel. How are you doing? Pretty good. Yourself? Good. So uh, what uh, is your I thought about 
I actually have a rant, or and it won't be as good as Lancer's last rant was a couple of months ago. But my rant, if I can say it, was sort of the, the way this Shanshan was used at the end of the in the the last book in the last battle. I mean, we had gone on throughout the whole series that Rand's going to break bonds between everyone. You set up Ty Lee as working with Perrin and sort of, you know, saying, hey, maybe we can use these as allies. But then all the Shanshan, none of the Shanshan broke free in the last battle and said, hey, I'm going to defy my queen, the Empress, and he'll go help out, you know, Matt's forces and the, the forces of light. I think it would have been much better had Kylie and the division of and her division and maybe some of the um, Suldam and Damane who um, ran it freed after the incident with um, Semarag, you know, show up when he was trying to get the um, Teslin and the other, um, you know, the, those other um, channelers and the Dragon's Horn to make one gateway and basically say, yeah, yeah, you, you know, Teslin saying it's going to be a small gateway and then Kylie saying, we can make more gateways so you can come out that quicker. So are you saying much more, are you saying Andrew, you want the, do you want Rafe and his team then to uh, not reimagine the Sean Chan, but do you want them to kind of rewrite things and how the Sean Chan go and give us more insight into no, the culture? I don't want nation, them just in that, in, and I was, I was talking more in the books itself, ranting in the books as I thought it was <laughs> gotcha. underused in the books so. though. Yeah. Well, Jordan and or Brandon, the way it was done at the end is like, okay, I understand that the Shanshan generally, we're going to, you know, what that strategy was, but I thought that you, know, you had a chance of using Ty Lee character to sort of break the bonds. I mean, heck, you even had Egwene come to acknowledge the, the value of at least one individual Shanshan as a person. So I thought it would have been a good idea to see her Great, you know, with her troops and her division, you know, go help fight. I'd right, rather right. just wait until it's very end. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, I, I hear you. That, I, I think that's the, uh, I think that is the, that becomes the question or, um, you know, for Rafe and his team with something like a huge battle like that. I, I know in the books, we all kind of disagree <clears throat> maybe how some of those pieces were taken care of. But then when you think about it from the perspective of what is te- what the Rafe and his team have to do, I think that's going to be, it's going to be difficult, right? A lot of fans are going to want him to touch things and change them. And a lot of fans are going to be like, no, 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 leave it exactly how it happens. So. Oh, I mean, I think they're going to have to change things on the scope of the last battle anyways, on the television show. I mean, it can't be, it can't be, you know, scene for scene as it was in the, in the books anyway. So, I mean, that's a given. Yeah, for sure. No, no, I agree with you. I agree no, with you. That's my mini rant, so take it Andrew, I, I, I appreciate it. Or, take it or leave it. I appreciate the rant. I appreciate the rant, man. All right. Hey, we'll talk to you soon, Andrew. Yep. Bye. All right, have a good evening. Bye. Okay, I mean, if I could... Uh, if I could yeah, yeah, that, go for it. Yeah, please do. I, I always found the Sun Channel really interesting because they were there in the very first 1984 draft, uh, the outline that Robert Jordan had for the series, and it, they were going to play such a huge role in the series, and Rand was going to go there for like, an entire book and spend time. <clears throat> Um, and then as the series developed, that changed quite a lot. And I think at one point, um, he was actually, he had to move a lot of his Sun Chan material into the Infinity of Heaven series he was playing through right after Real Time was completed. True. So I think Robert Jordan all had a really big plan in mind for the Sun Chan. I think one of the problems is that they, is that he knew he was going to be writing this um, series, this trilogy with Matt um, and, the, and the Sun Chan after the main series was completed. So I think some of the material about the breaking of bonds of the Sun Chan, the slavery remaining in place, I think some of that material he was, thinking he was going to address later on, but unfortunately, obviously, he wasn't able to get to that point. So whether that means that Rafe, from the perspective of the TV show, wants to change how the Sun Chan story unfolds, I'm not sure. But I think yeah. there's certainly the scope for it to be, to be different. No, that's a, great, that's a great question, you know, because, again, that brings up back to that spinoff question is, you know, does that become something, are they thinking about that right now? Or are, are Rafe and his team kind of asking themselves, you know, are we going to spin some of this stuff off? Are we going to leave some of this stuff off to the side? Or do we want to cover it um, in there? So, yeah, that's a, I think that's a, that's a great question. We have, uh, we have one more caller, and then we'll spin the wheel again here one or, twi- one or two more times, and then we'll, uh, we'll be done for the day. Let's bring in Glenn. Glenn, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. Hey, how you doing? Guys. Hey, good to hear you. You're doing good. How are you guys doing today? Great. Great, great. So what's your question? Good to talk to you guys. Yeah, you too. Well, I was calling. I wanted to first wanted to say hi to Adam. I met Adam a long time ago on Wattmania, 
And uh, it's been a long time since I used to communicate with him there. He gave me a bunch of good geek or, uh, British TV shows to watch, so I want to thank him for that. Okay. Um, <laughs> my question is, with all the good stuff we have with the show so far, what is it that you're actually concerned about or think might not come out as good as you hope? Not as good. Uh, that's a great question. Is if does anyone on the what panel have one answer? Yeah. Kind of. I think the only concern I have is the how they're going to cope with the compression of the story. So I think that when you've got fourteen book, very big books, um, you know they're as big as the Game of Thrones books, um, and you, you know they struggled to fit. Well, they did. They cut entire storylines and entire character arcs to fit things into just eight seasons. Um, and from the look of it, Wheel of Time is going to have even shorter seasons and we're not going to have, you know, 14 seasons. Um, so I think that um, ha just how they handle the compression, I think because the entire book series is complete, they can map out all the story arcs from start to finish and say, and probably make better judgment about what they can cut and what they can keep. Um, but I think that's probably going to be the concern for, I think, for most people is that inevitably fan favorite scenes and characters are going to be left out. Um, so I think that's probably the main, the main concern that I have, but I think it's, you know, it's a good problem to have. I think so many TV shows ha don't have enough story in the. <laughs> right. So, yeah. This this right. this definitely has enough story. Yeah. Com the compression yeah. is a huge concern. I think. Uh, Rob, is there one that's coming to your mind? Because I think compression is a great one, Adam. Uh, Rob, uh, is there one kind of like that that you, that you're not afraid, yeah. you're fearful of? Um, well, just because we haven't heard anything about the Forsaken, and this kind of goes into, you know, what we were talking about just a little bit ago, um, you know, if, because it, logistically, as I'm looking at it, we have our core group of heroes, right? And then we have, you know, the big bad, who's that, you know, the dark one. And then we have Thane, who's, you know, kind of like the, the golem kind of like side baddie, right? Like, uh, but then we have, you know, all of the Forsaken and, you know, all of the shadow spawn and stuff like that. So there, I just hope that they don't decide like, oh, we don't need the Forsaken that much or we can, you know, just compress them down to like, you know, three or four people or whatever, you know. I really hope they don't do that, um, you know, and just because I know that we've only heard like a fraction of the casting, but we've never heard any of uh, the villains except for Pain, right? Um, and uh, arguably one of the White Cloaks, but I would, I would, I would just hate for for them to be sidelined or, you know, on the cutting room floor. Yeah, that's yeah. Their yeah. their whole like, um, you know, th their different backgrounds, their different motivations are are fascinating. Um, you know, even if, yeah, like Bilal just shows up and gets like bail fried right off the bat, you know, but um, the most useless forsaken. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a, that's a, that in and of itself is a good question, which is, you know, do they have space? And I think it kind of goes along with this compression question, which is, you know, how much do they compress even the little that we're given about the backstories and of the Forsaken themselves? You know, the things that we learn tangentially in the glossaries or in the big white book or, you know, that we've learned over the course of asking Robert Jordan questions. You know, those type of things are information that we have access to and can kind of um, add, you know, details where they're kind of thin in the books. And, the, you know, but do they have time to put those in and really make interesting villains and interesting, you know, monsters or not just give us kind of some two dimensional kind of cliches in that regard? Yeah, I, I hope not. Corey, what comes to mind for you on this, on uh, this question? I genuinely think they are going to compress the, um, the Forsaken in some fashion into fewer characters um, just from a, a film perspective. So there's that for me, um, but I, I'm my one of my main concerns uh, is, and it's something that's always been on my mind ever since even before I was thinking about the TV show was just how you would translate a lot of the internal dialogues and the internal components of the characters onto screen. Um, Perrin for me is one of those characters that's really uh, challenging, and I think that they're going to have to do a lot of writing. Um, adapting his his internal dialogue into written plot points to get that across on screen there's just a lot of uh of underlying stuff that i think is going to be uh, that i'm afraid i'm, I'm afraid that it, it might not come through uh the way that i would hope it would on screen because it's just a different the difference in the medium um 
So I'm, I'm kind of concerned that uh, character motives or important character plot points are going to get watered down and sort of cut out in montages and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. one of my concerns. Um, and I, and I understand it's, it's, it's hard to, it's going to be very, very challenging. Like that's one of the things I don't envy Rafe for the challenge he has in front of him to adapt this to film and uh, to be able to make fans of the books happy um, and create something that is true to their head canon. I think that there might be stuff that we lose that is in the books for the sake of a TV adaptation. As long as the TV adaptation works well, I'm actually okay with that. It's just going to be a little bit of a process for me to let go of those things. Yeah, you've all, you've all kind of bummed me out at this point. <laughs> no, like, I oh, have shoot. one more. You just reminded me. You reminded me about these, uh, and so now I'm like, oh yeah, there are these things. Oh shoot, <laughs> sorry. Uh, this yeah. is these are these are tough okay. things. No, no, yeah, Rob, go for it. Uh, so one more, and this might be just like a really nitpicking thing is, I really hope that you know because we've had a debate before about whether they include like real world cuss words versus you know just keeping it in world right yep. and i really hope that they keep it like in world the way the books are because um somebody else had mentioned it in regards to like special effects for the witcher how it pulled them out of the world right yeah. and you know i hadn't read um you know the uh the song of ice and fire books um and when i saw that show um immediately you know in the pilot episode you know, hearing characters drop F-bombs and things like that, like, um, not necessarily ratings wise, but just <coughs> like, the in-world suspension of disbelief experience was ruined for me because I was mm. like, I thought this is supposed to be a different world. Why do they use the same language that we do? Um, you know, in Star Wars, it's kind of hit and miss because, you know, half the time they, they, they say damn or they say hell or something. It doesn't really contextually make sense with the the worldview there um but then they they have their own terms too like you know blast this or whatever and i really think that the wheel of time one of the interesting things about it is how much world building even goes into that little aspect you know where you realize at first when you're reading it when you're first reading eye of the world you don't realize matt is swearing when he says blood and ashes and stuff like that you know until it gets like told that watches language by people and then you're and then you start putting it together right and right, right, right. just little things like that. Um, I hope they don't inject, you know, like modern day things in there that will pull you out of the experience just because they, you know, they want to cater to a certain audience or whatever. So. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I agree with that. And and these are all the questions that they get to answer, right? And this is the difficulty, I think, of the adaptation itself. There are so many pieces to this. <laughs> There's so many things that they have to weigh. And for example, the thing that hasn't come up that will, and in answer to your question, Glenn, it, for me, is definitely uh, changing any of the kind of metaphysics and not understanding the repercussions 14 books down the line, right? Or not, yeah. like, if, you, if you make a change, fine, but now make it consistent. And I think making, changing canon or changing <laughs> metaphysics and then adding consistency throughout the entire series i think that's more difficult than it is just to follow the metaphysics but inevitably there's going to be changes so i can't imagine something like that won't happen i think for me that's one of my biggest concerns is seeing something obvious does that make sense like seeing where they weren't consistent with some you know change that they chose and i think that that normal regular viewer probably won't um Mm -hmm. and, and, but I think for me, right, like for other fans, I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, that is the that's that's my concern. So, Glenn, before I let you go, is there one of these that we haven't mentioned that is top on my top of mind for you? Um, like mine is actually changing too much from the first two books, because I view the first two books as so intricately laid and plotted out. They're just absolutely fundamental to how the rest of the series plays out. And small changes here and there are fine, but you can't make too many changes in adapting them. Otherwise, it has a major ripple effect on the rest of the series. And that's yeah. my main concern. Yeah, I, lo I love that idea. That, uh, pointing out that not making very many changes in book one and two will set the stage, I think, and the foundation you need. And maybe larger changes could happen later. But I like that idea. That's a That's a... 
that's a well that's well said, Glenn. Hey, thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, look forward to you guys have you later. a great day. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. Bye. So let's uh, we're coming down to the end here. Let's spin the wheel one more time. Thank you for everyone who called in. Really appreciated all those calls. It's awesome talking to the fans again. It's one of my favorite parts of the show. Uh, but let's let's see if we can't spin it one more time and come up with a fun little category to end on. Uh, we have some pretty funny ones here. Uh, looks like we got number two. Let's see what we have here. Okay, this one's uh, this one's good. So, expand or retract Wheel of Time relationships. So I want to know from you three if you could. Would you expand a relationship that we have, or would you pretty much nix it and get rid of it? You know, and if you could, if you had the choice, and which relationship that we we don't have to spend a lot of time talking about why. I'm just kind of curious if there's a relationship you hope that Rafe either puts more into or takes more from because you just can't stand what's already there. Do any of you have top of the mind, Corey? You kind of seem ready to answer this. Am I right? Do you have a do you have an answer that's on the tip of your lips here of whose relationship uh, you'd expand or retract? I, I kind of hope they they cut out a lot of the stuff between... Um, oh, man, I'm having a brain fart. Um, shoot, what's his name? The boy that blows the horn. Why can't I think of his name right now? You're thinking about Alver? Yeah, what the heck? Sorry, guys. Uh, I kind of hope they sort of dismantle or, or reduce the uh, weird uh, relationship he has with females. <laughs> oh yeah. The, 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 this is, oh, I see what you're saying. So I don't you know wanna... where he gets that. Though. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's an interesting one. That's a. That's a. That's, that's one that I wouldn't have ever thought of. So, <laughs> by the way, I'm seeing lots of answers. Of course, Egwene so and Gawain for sure. For sure. Okay. We should. So. We should meet Satel's husband. So yeah. What, Rob, let's hear yours. Um, I think that they should get rid of the Tom and Moraine thing. Because You're, that did yeah. not serve any purpose in the story at all. And, I mean, admittedly, they're both subtle people, so you never really see it, so that makes sense. But in the grand scheme of things, it, it, it really, to me, it didn't make sense because Tom has such a um, uh, chip on his shoulder about the Aes Sedai in general, especially in the first and second books, um, in regards to, um, you know, keeping the boys away from Tarvalon away from all Aes Sedai, right? Sure, And sure. so then for him to be suddenly falling in love with one who he he knew what she was like when he first saw her, you know, when they both arrived in Emmons Field. So that just kind of like there was a disconnect there. And I don't think that really made a whole lot of sense. Well, you're going to make a huge friend of my good friend Mary by suggesting this and also Natalia. Yeah. I think they're both well within this. Uh, but that would be, I, I wouldn't mind that cut whatsoever. I can see them, you know, uh, retracting that, and I don't think it would make a huge difference. So, um, what about you, Adam? Is there one here that you are hoping for uh, that that Rafe and his team, the writers, are going to expand or retract when it comes to the relationships in the books? Um, yeah, I mean to go for a non-romantic relationship. Um, sure, I, I've always thought it was really interesting the relationship between Rand and Lan. Um, so the sort of like the Lan sort of like teaching him sort of like sword play, but also teaching him sort of mental discipline um, and that kind of thing and self-reliance. And I think that's something you that kind of gets skipped over a little bit at the start of the Great Hunt when you find out that there's been they've been sort of training together for about a month. Um, and then later on, you get little bits when they when they're in the same vicinity as one another. Um, but that's sort of like a potential good sort of like almost like mentor student sort of like relationship, which I think gets a little bit of short shrift in the book. So I wouldn't mind seeing that that's when I'm expanded out a bit more. Yeah, no, that's a great one. That's a great pick uh, for an expansion relationship. I would love to see that one, uh, Lan and Rand. Uh, same thing with, uh, I would like to see, I mean, I know we get this in New Spring more, but I'm, I, maybe that's what they'll do is maybe they'll bring more of that in. I would like to see more of Swan and Moraine's relationship. Like I'd like to see, I'd like to really feel like in the books, like I feel like they are, you know, uh, best friends and that there's a huge amount of respect and trust there beyond just they have this mission, the shared mission together and, and they're kind of trusting each other's, their lives together. But, you know, uh, I, I want to see something. I want to see him dig in a little bit more. That's, that's kind of for me. I'm kind of curious in chat. Is there one relationship that you would want to expand or retract? Throw it in there. We'll kind of, we'll, we'll see those as we finish up here. By the way, I want to thank 
the three of you for showing up here on a Saturday afternoon. It was a lot of fun <laughs> to go through those questions. This is always a blast for me, and hopefully it was enjoyable for you to just pick random topics and just riff off of them. It was a lot of fun to see chat jump in and get so excited about some of these questions. Uh, and it was fun to yeah, it was fun to see Sarah come in and chat a little bit before she had to go. So thank you, three, the three of you. Please, everyone that's watching, uh, please like this video. And also check out the description. Go follow Weekly Wheel News on Twitter. Rob's amazing. You Not only that, uh, his, his wife's amazing, and they create some amazing products. You, you should go check those out. He's always talking about those on Twitter. And obviously, definitely go follow Adam on Twitter and follow DragonMount.com along with the DragonMount Wheel of Time Community Show. They have a Wheel of Time Community Show on YouTube. You can find them there in the description also. And then last but not least, go follow my friend here, Corey Lansdell, on Instagram and on Twitter. I think you're on, maybe on, you're on all of the social media. Kind of, uh, <laughs> you're every, yeah. but, but definitely Instagram is a lot of fun to follow his work. He's posting, you know, he'll do commissions and he'll post images of that and they're amazing. It's so fun to kind of see you pick a, pick a character. Do you have one that you're working on right now that you can kind of give us a hint on? Yeah. That we have something coming up? Well, I did a live stream, of, uh, live stream of art a little while ago working on a sketch for one of Tom. And so that's in the works, but it's kind of in the wings right now because I've got a couple of commissions that I'm doing. So, cool. Yeah. Are they they're Wheel of Time commissions? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. The one is, uh, as I said, it's a scene from Fires of Heaven uh, with Darid, and uh, it's a really complex piece. It's kind of killing me right now. Um, and then, uh, yeah, another one is sort of just a um, an Aes Sedai and uh, Rand depiction. But awesome. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Like I said, go follow these gentlemen on social media uh, where you can. And to those of you that are still watching and still here with us, hopefully you show up on Watt Wednesday. We'll talk all about the Black Tower and with the Black Tower podcast. It's going to be a lot of fun. So that's it, everybody, for tonight from the Dusty Wheel. As we say around here, good afternoon. It's a Sunday. And smash to black. If you want news and rumors that appear Dusty Weed.